Good morning. Let's quickly uh, go into the discussion. Um, you are a, you are a, a crime. You are a crime scene analyst. I want to first ask, uh, what views uh, do you share about the state of Nigeria's uh, insecurity? Well, um, if you ask me that question, and I'll be honest with you to tell you that uh, uh, we keep hearing the word technical, but uh, if you want to be honest about it, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me, please? I can hear you right on. I can hear you. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, what I would say is uh, we've not yet arrived, but we are still on the process. That's the best uh, 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 input I can say now, that we are on the process, but we have not yet arrived. They're on a percentage uh, uh, um, uh, ground, I would say we are still in, in between 40-something percent. So it's still a process. Okay. Um, so, however, uh, you have just said that um, you have just called Nigeria 40%. Um, can you tell me the reason for which you scored Nigeria 40% in the fight or war against um, terrorism? Okay. Um, why I said that is because uh, when you look at uh, security as a whole, uh, the, uh, you need to understand that it is a word that has to do with safety of lives and property, uh, which is the basic uh, amenities for the government to the people. That's one. And secondly, when you look at the, 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 the timing it started, let's be specific with the, with the year 2029, down to this hour, there should have been uh, um, a decline, right? But it is increasing. Now, that's one. Then secondly, why I said it's 40% is that in the, in, in the security uh, 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 techniques, there's what we call um, intel, right? When you want to fight your enemy, you need to know your enemy strategically. So if you know your enemy, you will know the modi operandi, which is one, you will know who is funding them, which is two, you will know their capacity, their armory, and everything embedded with the word intel. So if we are fighting from 29, uh, 29 down to 2023, and we've not significantly uh, uh, have a percentage high, then I say 40 Why? Because uh, if you want to fight your enemy, you need to know them in total. Look at uh, um, Russia and Ukraine. Obviously, when they started, when you ask a layman, they'll tell you, oh, Russia would defeat Ukraine, purely. But it is up to a, two years now. It's different. It, it's because of the uh, that they are using, but they don't have the adequate um, intels to defeat Ukraine. That's one. Now look at Hamas Israel. Now Hamas Israel, because Israel have adequate knowledge about Hamas, which is inter gathering. They have enough intels about Hamas, and that is why the whole thing is different in its view. So when you want to fight your enemy, when you have adequate knowledge about who you are fighting, what they have, who is sponsoring them, the yes that you are using to fight them, there will be a progressiveness. So it will not be like, uh, hit and go, come back, this and that. No, it will be a progressiveness that the citizens will see it, that in this year, it is the, it, it, it decline. In the coming year, there's a decline. In the next year, but not that this year it will decline, next year it will increase, next other year it will decline, and it will be like up, down, up, down. No, it's not a progressive. So that's why I put that. Though they are trying, but you know, sometimes when you tell people you're doing it's good, prepared to uh, fail. Would I be right to say that uh, what you're saying in its essence is that the Nigerian government is really uh, not prepared? Now I like that word. Now let me let me just uh, uh, establish this. When something becomes a priority, 
you have what it takes to bring on board, right? Look at COVID-19. When COVID-19 becomes a priority in Nigeria, both the rich and the, and the poor, we are all scared. So there were measures put in place that overtake the whole of the territory of Nigeria. This we all know. But in compared to the priority put on insecurity, it is not equal match. Right? So that is why I put that percentage on it. So when there is a priority on insecurity, then you will see the difference. However, uh, the reason why we see this uh, 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 increased decline uh, and all that, it is because of the, 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 the military involvement in the internal security, which for me, it's not, um, uh, it's a good strategy, but not the best strategy. They should have been the last resort. And maybe furthermore, we'll talk about the involvement of military in the internal security. As a matter of fact, I, I'm, I'm taking you up on that uh, because um, uh, information uh, is very critical. Uh, you have just passed a message saying that the military uh, seems to be involved in uh, insecurity. I would like you to expatiate on this. That's number one qu question. Uh, following that question also is, I'd like to get your reaction also on the recent uh, bombing, of course, which the army have said it is an accidental a bombing. Well, what's your reaction about it? And um, what do you think? Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, before I establish that, let me just go back to what I said. With, uh, if you look at the Police Act 2020, you will understand that it has been given to the police to carry out military functions in the country and even outside the country. Right? Go look at that. Now, the police have a lot of power in Nigeria. But as now, when you call a child and ask a child, what do you want to become in terms of security now? He or she will say, I want to be a soldier. Why? Because he felt the soldiers are doing more than what the police ought to do. That is one. Then secondly, what if the military are in the border and in the forest? And the police, the DSS, the, the, the NIA, the civil defense and all the law enforcers who are under the internal security do their job well in, this, in, in the internal affair. And when there is a criminal element or terrorism and this security chase them out and those in the, in the forest, you know, mop them. I think it will be a clear way of uh, eradicating uh, insecurity. But now, you ask a question, then I'll go back to what I just established. The issue of the bomb that took place on Sunday is this, that uh, the Air Force said they were not the one, and the Army admit. I think it's just, it's okay, because sometimes there are errors. So let's agree let's 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 first of all uh, appreciate them because it's not easy to 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 bring your life in order to save the citizens it's not easy security is not easy right and the security need the help of the community to achieve a goal that will save the citizens of the country so in doing that uh, i think there's an error which the chief of army has uh, admitted so i won't have any other thing to say than to say he has already admitted and uh, measures are put in place to uh, ensure that such things do not happen. But I think uh, sometimes intels are important. So if adequate intels were gotten, I think it would have reduced the casualty. But however, he has admitted and uh, we know mistakes are bound to happen, but uh, I think they should work more on the intels. But however, that would have been for the police. That's the most important thing. It shouldn't have been the army doing this. That's the first thing. It should have been the police. We have the special force in the police. We have different units in the police. We have a lot of uh, uh, units in the police that ought to do all this uh, tackling of insecurity. Then the military would have been the last resort. Do you know why? Because enemies always watch. They look at your tactics. 
They look at your manpower. They look at your strength. They look at what you do. And that is why fighting insecurity is very difficult now because the military are involved and overstretching. So the, the enemy are watching what and what strategies are you bringing on board. Now, if it was the police that were doing all these things and the enemies are using the police strategies, it will be easier now to, for the army or the military to come in and cop this. But however, the military came in and overtake everything. And now the enemies are looking at the tactics and looking at the strategies, and it's now like um, a battle. Okay, um, it's not supposed to be. Let so me ask you, dear War, um, are you aware that the number of police we have is not even uh, enough, uh, to, of course, to protect, the, to protect Nigerian citizens? And um, of course, you, you've seen situations in the country. Uh, take, for instance, uh, during the NSAS, the police were there and it seems they were handicapped until they brought in the military. And the military, uh, you know, a lot of people died, you know, that's the story for another day. Uh, don't you think the government of the day, uh, they're trying to protect uh, the, the low number of, of, of police officials that are not enough to even protect the people? And that's the reason why uh, they have to, you know, um, deploy the military there. Okay, let me, let, let me just say something about this. Do you also know that there are cases where the military even guide the foreigners, contractors who are uh, contractors of uh, uh, road construction and all that. Do you know that? Have you seen where you see uh, uh, military personnel guiding foreigners? It's wrong. In the first place, the, the, oh, the oath the military took is to safeguard the, the terror and the nation called Nigeria. That's it. Why? Now, Back to your question that uh, the, the police are outnumbered and all that. We have civil defense. We have uh, uh, federal road safety. That is why I said the federal road safety corps should be changed to Nigerian road security and safety. And what is the difference between safety and security? Safety has to do with measures and, and, and conditions put in place, right, to protect citizens. Mark this word now to protect citizens from accidental harm. Securities, in the other part, are measures put in place to protect citizens from intentional harm. So now, when you not bring a word for federal safety, remove them. That's my own uh, proposal. Uh, taking off federal road safety, changing them to Nigerian Road Security and Safety Corps. Now. The numbers the police are complaining about, we have from the road safety, because as it is now, the road safety are not doing anything. We joined them. And that's why. Then the civil defense are there. The DSS are there. And the DSS also have roles to play in intergathering. I keep saying this, that in Nigeria, we hear more of the FBI of US in than we hear of DSS in that. Meaning to say, you hear the, the FBI do more jobs more intergatherings, more investigations and all that than we hear of this in Nigeria. So they need to do more. We hear of the CIA of America more than we hear the, the, we hear the NIA. One thing we want to, I need to uh, point out is this. You don't win war because you are populated. You don't win war because you are powerful. You don't win war because you have all the mechanism. No, you win because you have intels. So complaining about the population is one, but two is how do you utilize the interest you've gathered? And which is the key problem, we, we keep saying that there's no synergy within the armed forces, or uh, sorry, within the security and architecture and all that. But however, how effective are these interests utilized? So that's first, before we begin to talk about, okay, well, yes, we are now, because imagine one police ratio, 500 and, I think eight citizens, which is not really encouraging. So I think that's why. But we have other agencies that are not utilized, just as the FR, uh, FRS has just mentioned. They're not utilized. And also we have the uh, local police or the vigilante and the uh, uh, neighborhood watch. We still have them. So if we have intels utilized, I think the, the, the executions will be uh, more than complaining about population. Uh, Ujelbo, yes, talking about utilizing uh, the intel, 
and um, also this uh, the suggestion you made or the proposal you have made uh, for us to change a federal road safety call i uh, mean to, i mean to match them with the police in such a way that i mean they have people to to protect the people or to save um citizens now the, the, you, you just talked about the fact that there is no synergy which is uh, what a lot of people have been saying and now don't you think that uh, uh, these um the heads of all of these um security agencies will definitely kick against this because now if you want to bring the F frsc uh, into the, the the nigeria police it means that they'll only have uh, one head which they will want to kick against uh, that's a uh, number one then two talking about us not enhancing intel well enough what would be your suggestion to government uh, apart from this your submission on enhancing our uh, intels uh, better first i'm not saying that the frcs will emerge with the police but rather i'm saying they should support in the sense that look at it the constitution uh, uh governing uh or the act uh, 27 governing the, the establishment of federal road safety give them the power to champion anything regarding highway and obviously you don't uh, be on the highway harmless if we want to be truthful to ourselves right and you call them federal uh, security and they are not armed now one of the things we need to consider is that criminalities or criminal elements or activities usually have a root and this route passes through the highways and you don't expect the 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 uh, the, the, commerce, uh, the 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 federal road safety officers who are on the highway to just be on that highway without doing anything when they are not armed that is why i said the name now should be nigerian road security and safety why because in terms of the security now they are helping to provide security while also they are also helping to provide safety that was why i defined the difference between safety and security they are playing a role why because in that uh, uh highway arm robbers pass there uh, uh, those who carry uh, transportation of firearms, they do pass there. And you don't expect, if, if the government can approve firearms for vigilante, which is local firearms, why not, uh, you know, ap uh, approve arms for the federal road safety? It will help mitigate this problem we have because every crime has a root. And every crime, again, has a trace. And because crime has a trace and has a root, and all this route passes through terrains. And federal road safety are given this power to to over to um, uh, overlook and uh, to, to check meet vehicles passing by and inspectations of ve uh, vehicles. So when you look at this power given to them and they are not armed, and when they encounter terrorists or they encounter criminals or, uh, or kidnappers, they are left harmless. So that's one. Now we're talking about the challenge of insecurity the federal safety would have been another body to help not to join like join like okay there'll be no the federal safety should be under the nsa that is the most important and not that they will emerge with the police no they are already established they have their own art but it's the equipment of them and the training of them is what is required because we are at number we are not uh, uh up to the number required to to uh, uh, safeguard the, 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 the citizens, right? So the self federal safety should not only just be on the highway, just like that. And you can't protect without being armed. It's 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 not really uh, uh, um, there's, uh, uh, there's a word I want to use, but however, these are the key roles. So it will help you know uh, uh, mitigate insecurity because anybody coming through the highway, seeing the federal safety armed. You know, they will think twice. That's one. Then secondly, emergency re response. It will be easier. You can't go for emergency response as first responder on the highway. And, and you think that probably there might be armed robbers coming up or any shootout or anything. So you have to be prepared as a security personnel because they are not local security. They are federal agents. So every eye is on them. You understand? That's one. Then, in country um, terrorism, they will help again. These people are very good in vehicle inspections. How about you put them at the border to assist the uh, 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 custom? Why? Because the customs usually have what we call the, uh, the check those who are at the border, right? So, and that's what we call the custom duty. Now, 
you will imagine people will buy car, import car, and you're driving the car in the city, the federal safety will arrest you and tell you, okay, this car is not meant to be there, uh, here, uh, driven in Nigeria, all, all sorts of talk, talk. But if they are at the border, now all cars that are coming in will be checked and inspect at the border, then move back to the uh, custom because the custom has their own uh, uh, act and, 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 and functions and rules they are playing. So the, uh, uh, the custom will do that. Then when the car is coming to the, to the city, it's easy because now you know it has been checkmated at the border. That is the most important thing. And another thing, again, we keep talking about, uh, okay, we are outnumbered, we are this, or what if you give them firearm, there will be extrajudicial killing. The thing is this, our judiciary system need to apply punishment very well and fines very well. That's one most important thing. I tell you, you in fact, it's very difficult to see citizens go to, uh, go to court. A lot of them just see court functions on TV, a lot of them. So why? Because our officers are not trained, so they don't even want to even take citizens to court so that citizens will know that what they are doing is bad. That's one. Two, there are no punishment for officers who are involved in extrajudicial killing. So that is when you come up, when you come with the talk about a fire, and they say, no, it will increase the, no. The thing is, look at UK, look at US, look at other countries. Their police don't use rifle. They use pistols. And these are what should be done in Nigeria within the community. Those who are supposed to use rifle are those officers who are in the special units, the special unit, or officers like the, the mobile police, or the, uh, you know, those officers who are in the special uh, department. Those are the ones that are supposed to use rifle because they use that when it is needed. In, all, in other words, when there are duress calls, or there are uh, 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 an attack or uh, so okay so okay cue back a bit you made mention of um the military should not have been involved in this insurgency they should have been the last resort all right so boko haram came into the country in 2002 right and then they started this their kidnap and all of that in 2009 don't you think it's um long enough it's long overdue for the military to um come in with the military might that's one two um you made mention of the um federal safety corps um, being armed yes well it is good but now they are on the road and most of these uh um, mm -hmm kidnapping and all this insecurity um, um, happenings usually happen in the bushes. Nigerian being Ogun, Kaduna, um, all these highways. Yeah, in all the forests. So do you think road safety will do a good job at that? Okay, uh, let me start from the part you said, uh, forest. If you remember in my first statement, I said the military ought to be in the forest and the border. Why? Because when they are in the forest, okay, before I establish that, do you know they come from the forest to attack the citizens in the city? And when they do that, they run back. And when they run back, if there's a repel from the military or the police, they chase them some are killed and some escape and where did they escape to to the forest and that is it now if the military are in the forest right they are not with us because if you travel out to uk i bet you you spend four years you will not see the army or uh, uh, navy or air force or the military the whole of them you will not see that unless you go to their base now because you are in the community, you don't supposed to see them. You, they should be in the forest and the border. Why? So that when there is a crisis in the community, the police will help to cop it. And if they are not, and in the process of copying it, they are chasing these terrorists or these criminal elements out. Where are these people running to? Back to the forest. And who are they, who are they, who will be there in the forest? The military. So it will be easier for the military and the uh, internal security to put this element in the middle and they will come there. But when this military are in the city with us, 
it will be so difficult to defeat because it will be only chase, 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 but there is no counter attack and all that, right? That's one strategy. Then secondly, you may mention of, okay, they are in the bush, uh, the Federal Reserve, they are on highway. I said, every highway also lead to the forest. So if you say Federal Reserve should be on the highway and they are not armed, and you are arming the vigilante, where are these people following to come to the community? Because we have interstate uh, 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 crime also, and, would, uh, and also we have kidnappers who kidnap from a state to another state. They follow through where? To the highway. And from each highway, they enter through the bush. So if you arm these people, because there are chances where federal road safety will tell you they meet armed robbers on the way, or rather armed robbers meet them on the highway, and also people who are transporting firearms meet fire road safety, but because they are not armed, they underrate them. Imagine a driver who uh, uh, encounter a police armed, and the policeman will tell you stop there. He will stop because it's not that he's afraid of the police in the first place, but he's afraid of the firearm, so he will obey. Right, but when such driver meets a federal road safety, he or she will comply. But I'm not saying the weapon should be used as a threat, but it will as it will it will help to mitigate some other influence, some other things coming up from individuals who have criminal minds, right? So Firstly, as I said, the military ought to have been in the forest and in the border because if you look at the act governing the military, they are to safeguard our territories, not the city. And if they are doing that, they are taking over the, the, the power of the police. And that is why a lot of citizens will prefer to call soldiers in an internal matter or a community clash than to call the police because the military have already shown a power that have taken that that. Uh, that Pride of you being a police or that uh, a, a function of police from the uh, uh, society. So people feel they prefer to call a soldier for a, a, a case a police will have undo than to call a police, which is wrong. So that's my point. Fine. Uh, you speak with so much passion for the FRSC. And I'm wondering if you are, uh, um, you know, it's gradually looking like you are a spokesperson for that. Have you worked with the FRC before? In fact, it will, it will amaze you that uh, if you check all of my posts, I usually say things that I feel it will help curb insecurity. I have never spoke with any of them, neither do I even know the, 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 the commercial or I have, uh, I just post it on my Facebook and I tag those I need to tag and I tag uh, uh, TVC, I just tag a lot of people and uh, greatly uh, Mr. Sam just replied me. So I don't have uh, contact with them, but I feel as a Nigeria and as an expert, uh, utilizing them or using them will be uh, 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 something that will proactively help in fighting insecurity. Oh, okay, Valentine, uh, well, well said. I'm happy you're able to collect that aspect. I mean, we need to ask you because this might be a question on the mind of um, those who are also obeying you at the moment. And now finally, because um, this is a much time we'll permit quickly in one minute, uh, corruption is uh, one um, uh, is a challenge in this country. Do you think that if um, uh, the FRSC is being armed or, or allowed to carry arms, uh, do 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 you think uh, that they are they are likely to perform well or to be corrupted too? Okay, now when you look at the establishment of the uh, FRC and you look at their training process, you will know that they are trained by the military. That's first. They are not uh, trained unprofessionally. They are trained professionally by the military. That's first. And you know, when you're trained by the military, you are assumed a professional. That is one part. That's why. The second, let me mention about the law. This is not the problem. Is the law that is the problem now when you shoot extrajudicially or you kill someone that you don't supposed to kill because in in, in firearms there are creeds there are five creeds you don't you know you, the, the one is you treat your weapon as if it's loaded 
You don't point the muzzle of your rifle at the person you don't intend to shoot. So there are a lot of creed govern that rifle. So if they followed it or they disobeyed, there should be a law punishing them, right? That is why in uh, in the Western world that we try to copy, look at them. They don't use rifle in the community because rifles you can't you you you, you can't uh, 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 control them. They are required are not controllable right like for example in ak ak rifle now if you want to shoot point at mr a and mr b and c are close to mr a the tendency of you killing mr b and c is sure but when you used to the tendency of killing mr a because you want to kill mr a who is a criminal is sure why because you have to have a close range you have to be close to the person so it will enhance efficacy of our personnel their mind their mind their intellect and everything because one if you want to use a pistol you will know that the rounds of pistols are either 10 rounds to 15 rounds so you have to use your brain to utilize those ammunitions given to you but look at rifle they can shoot anyhow and it can even kill and you hear accidental discharge so these are uh, things the western world are trying to cop that is why you see uk police don't use rifle they use rifle when it has been escalated and they have a backup i keep saying this then look at the, 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 the us the police use rifle when there's a backup but there's a need then the SWAT team or uh, a special unit force will come in those ones will use the rifle so using um, saying that uh, giving them firearms no because they are trained by professionals and if the law backs that okay you have to you know do this as a because the essence of security, whether you are civil defense, you are police, you are FIRC, you are whatever, at the end point is you are safeguarding and you are sa uh, saving with the citizens of Nigeria. That's the most important thing. Um, at this juncture, uh, let me thank you, Valentine. The uh, However, let me also state to you, based on your submission, that every of the security agencies are all trained by professionals. And um, of course, we saw the, recently the error of the Nigeria military. So I like to clear that uh, part that uh, all of them are trained by professionals. So let me say many thanks to you uh, for being a part of the program, for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Our viewers, we have been speaking with uh, Valentine Edewo. He is a crime scene analyst and a forensic expert. Uh, many times, and to have a beautiful day. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes, uh, viewers, right about now, we will take a short break and uh, to over time, I'll be handing over to Shegu uh, for him to take you through uh, trends and hashtags. And of course, sporting duo Owakego will also be here to let you know what is the latest in the world of sports. So, join us again.